of the minutes. Now keep in mind, uh, make sure that your attendance is correct up top. That's how you get paid. And uh, make sure all the, uh, all the people who presented their departments, make sure the numbers in the minutes are correct. Because um, it's very hard to correct afterwards. Does anybody have any corrections on the minutes? Mary Margaret has made changes in, in the uh, library section uh, item. Okay. So I think I well, might have misspoken last time. So the issue is what is what was there was a full-time branch librarian and a part-time children's librarian. The part-time children's librarian left and they're going to replace her with a full-time children's librarian. Okay. And that job is posted. Okay. Are there any other corrections? Okay, Peter. Um, I just had one under the uh, finance committee vote. Uh, according to my records, the vote was nine zero five. We have fifteen people in attendance. Okay. Okay. Any other corrections or comments? Okay, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Water bodies, bring them in. Okay, so who will be leading the charge? David. Okay. But we're all going to be it's speaking all, all on different parts. Okay. okay. So I'm David White with the Conservation Commission and the Water Body Working Group. Maybe we should introduce ourselves. What? Should we introduce ourselves? Sure, introduce yourself. Yeah. I'm Susan Chapnick. I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission in Arlington. I'm uh, Brad Barber. I'm the co-chair of the Spy Pond Committee. And my other co-chair, Steve Ritchie, is, he's in Florida for a Check out water body. <laughs> yeah, check out the water bodies down there. Yeah. Uh, I'm Emily Sullivan. I'm the town's environmental planner and conservation agent. And I'm Chuck Taroni. I'm the vice chair of the Arlington Conservation Commission. Hey, welcome. So if you have our report, I believe. We're going to go through it in sort of sequence. But the first thing is going to talk about the budget process this year and how we organized the budget for this year. Um, so historically, the water body's budget has been administered by the Department of Public Works, and so uh, this year it's been a little different, and so the Conservation Commission took over the administration and management uh, for the account. Uh, and so uh, you'll see two spreadsheets in front of you. The first one is a, a water body's program analysis, giving a, a kind of a, a history and a projection forward, and that is the overview of um, what the budget has been and, and kind of what we're predicting it to be in the future. And then the second spreadsheet is a little bit more detail about what exactly those numbers on that first spreadsheet mean and where they're coming from. Uh, this year we've uh, reformatted the detail sheet to hopefully uh, provide more clarity on what uh, services and treatments are being uh, financed by this water bodies fund uh, and, and how they apply to each water body. So. This working group, we oversee the management of Spy Pond, the Arlington Reservoir, uh, Hills Pond, and, and then some McLennan work. And in, in, in we always are looking at the other water bodies in town, but that's uh, <coughs> the water bodies that we decided uh, and agreed that need uh, treatment the most. Um, so looking uh, at this year's uh, fiscal year 20, we requested, or we received uh, $50,000 from uh, Town. the town meeting last year and uh, for fiscal year 21 we're requesting $55,000 you'll see uh, the breakdown uh, 
a lot of, uh, or since I guess 2017 or fiscal year 2017, we've been building what's called the Spy Pond Reserve, and that's for uh, what's called the sonar treatment in Spy Pond, and, and Brad will talk about that in more detail. But you'll see that that's a, a, a large part of the budget, and so that's just a treatment that costs a lot of money. Um, but uh, effectively, uh, so far this year, we have uh, expended $53,000, uh, and next year we're projecting to expend $68,000. Uh, our big goal this year, in, in, as in past years, has been to, to lower the reserve uh, as appropriately based on uh, what we're expending the funds on, and as well as being conscious of what we are requesting for funding in the next fiscal year. So the big change is tracking the spy pond reserve fund separately so we see how much has been set aside for that treatment. We have not spent that, so we're just stopping any further investment in that reserve fund until it's needed or until we decide what to do. But it's not needed. So that's the that's the big change in terms of our budget spreadsheet. And the, the other major change is on the second page on the details. Um, we have more details on each water body on exactly what we're proposing to spend the portion of the budget on. And this also helps us in the water body group to better manage our water bodies, understanding what we're spending and what kind of effect we're getting from that, which is something that is a goal of ours to start tracking that more aggressively year to year um, to see that we're getting a return on investment from our from our management and our um, our budget costs. So the first water body I'm going to talk about is the Arlington Reservoir. And the uh, big issue there has been water chestnut management. They've been harvested mechanically for the last many years. And we think it needs to be reevaluated in terms of the timing of the harvesting process and perhaps other things as well. So we're hoping to do an earlier harvesting this year, a month earlier, when there's fewer plants to harvest. We're also planning to ask God for our RFQ to evaluate the reservoir, its water quality, and possible treatment plans for the reservoir. So we're trying to get a better handle of what needs to be done at the reservoir. Any questions on that? We've got a like who are you going to uh, ask for help? We sent a request for a quotation yeah. for an evaluation. Oh, for somebody. To somebody, yeah. RFQ. Yeah. We can send that copy to you. It'll be, it'll be public in a couple of weeks. We're writing it. So are you going to continue the mechanical harvesting? We're going to continue that because that seems to be recommended as coach, but the timing may be wrong. I mean, maybe may, may need to be earlier okay. than it has been in the last couple of years. Any other questions on the reservoir? Sorry? Is, is there a, a chemical solution to uh, water chestnuts? I'm not aware of it. I never heard of them. The recommended solution appears to be harvesting. I mean, if you chemically treat them, they're just going to die and pollute the reservoir water. So I'm not sure if that's even a viable approach to the reservoir. The other problem is I, I believe the chemical treatment will kill the live plants, but the seed pods would still be in the sediment, which would not be affected. Right. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on the reservoir? And the reservoir also had hazardous algae bloom in the summer as well, which is rare for the reservoir. That indicate a combination of too many nutrients and very hot weather. <coughs> Where would the nutrients be coming from? Just down from the Great Great uh, Meadows? Monroe Brook, which flows from Lexington, which is not actually from the Great Meadows, it's it's from above the Great Meadows. Okay. Yeah. Whipple Hill and Reef Brook and all that be Monroe Brook. All the way around. Yeah. Monroe Brook. And also from runoff, surface runoff. Surface, surface runoff. Mm -hmm. And there's two storm drains from Lexington into the reservoir as well. 
So combination of sources. Does the farm drain into the reservoir? The, far, the Lexington farm. Uh, not directly. No. Not directly, no. I mean, it's through groundwater, and there is that outfall um, on Wall Street. Yes? You mentioned two storm drains uh, in Lexington that flow into uh, this body of water. Is there any way to approach the town of Lexington to put some money into this situation? Because is there pollution? Is there, is there water flow going into our pond? We haven't tested the outflow from those storm drains. That might be part of the analysis that we ask for. And what's coming into the reservoir from various sources? Other questions? Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Ellen can't be here tonight. Then we'll talk about, a little bit about Hills Pond. This is the pond in Nami Rocks Park. And it's extensively used as a small pond, and it's um, under regular treatment. And it's aerated now, which was finally resolved a couple of years ago. And the plan is to continue pretty much as we have in the past, with regular monitoring and treatment of the pond to keep a, a usable and attractive spot inside the, inside the park. Any questions? Mill Brook. Um, so uh, Mill Brook, uh, the, the water quality of Mill Brook uh, worsened a little bit this year compared to last year. Uh, Arlington isn't doing anything to actively, uh, I guess, like chemically treat uh, Mill Brook, but uh, there are interventions like uh, at Wellington Park. So there's that big project where we built some flood storage capacity and, and kind of built some green infrastructure, trying to remove some pollutants uh, before going into Mill Brook. Um, uh, the, the EPA just uh, released, or they just updated its stormwater permitting, and so Arlington will be undergoing more rigorous uh, stormwater regulations uh, that the town will have to adjust to, in uh, the hope being that through these uh, more stringent regulations, uh, water bodies like Millbrook and Alewife Brook, which are huge conveyances of water to the Mystic River, will uh, will, will will the town will invest in um, you know in, I mean I guess private property owners and public property owners will invest in interventions for stormwater to improve stormwater quality going into Millbrook and these brooks in the future. But that's long-term uh, vision and goals. And the primary problem with Mill Brook, I think, are the storm drains empty into it. Major storm channel. Yes. So, so um, if I may ask, I don't see any funds here for Mill Brook. Correct. So, I would say this this working group isn't actively managing water quality, and I, the water quality is more so managed through uh, the engineering division and in their investment in outfall investigation and in looking at uh, the stormwater infrastructure that's conveying into uh, Millbrook. Um, so it, that's mostly where, uh, or how Arlington is investing in Millbrook quality. And also the work that we're doing at um, Wellington Park um, for Millbrook restoration in order to add flood storage um, those are separate funds, so CPA funds and uh, what other funds we uh, use? State grants. State so grants. State grants. Thank you. We're leveraged yeah. for that, so we did need to request um, funds from the town, which is a good thing. <laughs> now, did you, in that uh, project behind Wellington, which I haven't had a chance to look at, did you take out the bridge? No, the bridge is still there. Okay. No, stay. Okay. Other questions on Millbrook? It's a great um, project if you haven't been down there. There's educational signage that talks about the history as well as the environment and what was done to improve it. It's really impressive. There was a gentleman at a precinct meeting in my precinct, which amazingly enough goes down that far, uh, the Purple House. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We know they, we know the owners. They're yes. they're very environmentally conscious. Especially since Millbrook periodically floods into its basement. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> Is there anything sort of being done in that direction? So um, the reason why there's a 
that area is in floodplain, so it's historically known to flood. But the, the culvert that goes under Grove Street is a real uh, bottleneck for Millbrook. And so uh, I think a, a large scale infrastructure project would have to be implemented in order to resolve that flooding. Okay, so they'd have to rebuild that section. They'd culvert. have to make the pipe bigger so that more water can flow uh, under Grove Street and like under the high school back to where the, the, uh, the Brook Daylight's Five Mill Street. Yeah, it's all connected. You, you increase upstream, my flood downstream. So it's a very complicated engineering. Sure. So, so there's a, a project that can be underway, not just the high school, but also on the uh, public works department. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a big problem. Flooding of the PBW uh, facility is a big problem. So, um, are we going to go redesign the 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 uh, culverts? for DPW in the high school and then not address Grove Street or what, what's the plan? Because if you address it later, then you could be undoing the work that gets done on the yes. building. So um, I believe that the the, uh, the culvert that, that actually flows under the high school and under DPW, I don't think that touching those culverts are part of the scope of either the DPW rebuild or the high school project. The, the <coughs> high school project right now, they're, they're uh, relocating some drainage, but it goes from drainage. Mass Ave to Millbrook, so closer to the CBS side of, of the high school. And they're not, um, the, the culvert under the high school was replaced maybe about 10 years ago, it was relined. Um, but I, I don't believe that there's any uh, right now effort to, to increase the, the capacity <coughs> of that culvert. I mean, that would probably take a huge undertaking because all that was in line with the uh, toxic waste. Yes, I think it's, it, it certainly is a uh, uh, complicated project, I believe. Yeah. Good choice of words. <laughs> Any other questions on uh, Bill Brook? Okay. McLennan. Okay. McLennan okay. is next. Um, you may remember um, the McLennan Park Detention Basins. Um, these are, st for those of you who don't know, these are the stormwater detention ponds that are behind McLennan Park all the way in the back, which were created in, um, when the landfill was closed. Um, and they were created, uh, the landfill was closed in 2006. Um, we were requested several years ago by um, this uh, committee to investigate the um, brown muck that ends up forming on the ponds um, back there, which is basically iron flocculation, um, and to investigate whether this is uh, harmful to human health or the environment, and if we should do anything about it. So we set, we set um, aside some money in our budget, um, which you approved, and we've been doing this for a few years to evaluate it. We got a final report in 2019 from our um, contractor, Woods Hole Group, and that report, if you want details, is online um, in its entirety. And um, the conclusion of that report is that the observed iron flocculation um, does not constitute a condition of readily apparent harm. Readily apparent harm in the, is a Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DEP terminology of whether or not it is negatively impairs the ecology, the environment. Um, however, some of the data we received um, for some metals are exceeding screening levels. Screening levels are not regulatory levels. Okay, they're not permit levels, they're not regulatory levels, you're not required to meet them. They're put in place as guidance for levels that might you might consider when you're evaluating the environment to see if there's any any um, negative effects. So we do have some exceedances of some metals um, in surface water samples and in sediment. Um, given that, what we did is we transmitted this information to DEP, um, to the Office of Solid Waste, which closed the landfill. Uh, just to be um, just to be transparent, we didn't have to report this. The landfill does not require any monitoring when it was closed. Um, it was considered done, and all the sampling and analysis at that time was considered acceptable based upon 
the rules and regulations in Massachusetts. Um, however, we asked DEP for guidance. Should we do any further research, investigations? Should we just let it go? Should we monitor it at any level? Um, I haven't heard, we haven't heard back from DEP yet. They said they'd get back to us in the spring. Um, they're very busy with active sites. This is low, a bit low on the totem pole. We did do a little bit of investigation. There are many ponds um, and small water bodies in the state of Massachusetts that have this problem. Some of, in some cases, it's natural. It's just naturally derived iron and iron oxidizing bacteria. Um, and similarly to in our situation, it appears to be temporal. Certain times of the year, it's there, and certain times of the year, it's not. For example, I went to visit recently, and there's, there's no evidence of it on the surface water. However, you can see staining of the iron on the trees or some mm -hmm. of the rocks on the banks and at the outfalls. Um, so we're, we're waiting to hear from DEP to see if there's anything further we should do. You'll see that we've put a small amount of money in the budget for um, further investigation depending upon what DEP comes back with, but we don't know what that would be. Any questions, questions on the quantum? Yeah. Question. Question. So, you don't know the source no. of that? No. The source could be groundwater, it could be stormwater. There are stormwater outfalls that empty into these detention basins. Um, it could be because they are stormwater detention basins. Outfall, they, these are man made. Outfalls was supposed to go in there. It was supposed to be a place to hold all this stuff and then have it slowly go downstream. Um, and it could be from the landfill. We don't know. We don't have groundwater data. There aren't groundwater wells there on the proper side of where the landfill was to um, sample. So if we were to try to get groundwater data, we would have to produce wells, which is fairly expensive. So we were waiting to see what DEP suggested we do, given that they have a lot of information about this kind of issue from other places in Massachusetts. Well, I guess I'm inquiring yeah. whether there's a desire to find out the source, because if it can be remedied, then that would be a decision the town would, I would think, right. address or decide not to address. Right. As opposed to just be happy with what it is right now. Right. Um, the desire would, would come from, I guess, the town personnel, whether, um, but we were waiting to hear from D what DEP want, said first. So if DEP says to us, you really should investigate where the source is coming from. We have found X, Y, Z and other types of ponds similar to this, and we suggest you investigate. That would be very clear. That would be a clear message. At this point, it's not so cut and dry to me based on the science. It's like, yeah, there's some iron flocculation, but that may be natural and not bad. You know, the environment may be fine. We don't need to understand the source. It's not an impairment. These are stormwater detention ponds. Detention ponds might have that because they get a lot of stormwater input. So I guess that's where I am right now. And the ponds yeah. appear fairly healthy. There's a lot of yeah. wildlife and turtles and wildlife living Great there. Great blue herons and muskrat and ducks and so all different, you know, all different to, kinds of birds. Also planning to extend the buffer area around the pond. Which oh, I forgot about that. To yes. make it more environmentally yeah. desirable. Yes. Right. Extend the buffer area around the pond. A no mow, a no mow area, a no mowing area. Is that what we're going to do, or what we need? We're going to do. Right. So one outcome of this. It was in our original permit a long time ago. Right. Is we found that that um, DPW was mowing down to the pond. To the very edge of the pond. Which is not really safe for the environment and doesn't allow a buffer strip for um, for for the. The habitat area, as well as it's for water, water infiltration and things like that. So we um, we're preparing a we're working with DPW and Park and Rec. Right, a memorandum for DPW and Park and Rec, and work together to um, create a buffer strip around these detention ponds to make them healthier. And that, and that reminds me that there's a Pragmatis problem at that is getting end. worse and worse at, at McLennan. 
what? At, the, at the end to, when it goes under the culvert to towards Lexington. Is that what you're on the hillside about? towards the playing fields? I think both ends are very nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is there a plan to address that? We, no. we have not. At the moment, no. <laughs> yeah. Did you want to say anything about Fred Mike's? No, I, I think that uh, as, soon as, as soon as we get through this uh, detention pond issue, I mean, Pragmites would be pretty easy to take care of. We've done it at Spy Pond. Mm -hmm. but we're just not looking at that right now. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention that the it's not really a pond. It's a detention pond. It's yeah. formed to detain the water that comes in from the groundwater and from the um, storm. storm drains. Storm. And there's supposed to be an operation and maintenance plan with that. Yes. And um, there's supposed to be a level that at which point where we meet that level, it needs to be uh, dredged up. And so there's a lot of things we're looking at now. And I mean, this iron flock is pretty unsightly. Personally, I think that it would be nice to isolate that in a better forebay before it meets the pond, but we don't know where it's coming from. So we're kind of in the middle of the process and don't have all the answers uh, about that, uh, about those questions that you asked right now. But um, we're still working on it, and um, mm -hmm. I think we're still very interested in that area of town. Thank you. Any other questions on the plan? Okay, next. Spy Pond. Okay, Spy Pond. Uh, it was a busy year. Um, some of it, some of it, I think you probably are aware of, and others you may not be. Um, uh, last time, uh, one big worry has, as, as, as we've been lucky this year. Um, last year, I reported that there was uh, we found 11 uh, water chestnut plants in Spy Pond, and each one of those has, you know, 100 seeds, and we were really, really worried that that. Um, that it would it would go it would be a problem this year, no water chestnuts this year, so that's a uh, uh, we actively the way to handle invasives is to prevent them from getting into your ponds in the first place. That was done by volunteers, right? That's right. That's right. So we, we basically found all the well, found them and both pulled them and the seeds. So um, and it's it's still going to be a worry. It's going to need continual monitoring just because um, the seeds, I'm sure there's some seeds there and they last for about 10 years. Um, we did two RFQs to, um, for both uh, a plant surveys and for uh, treat, treating the pond. Our existing um, a vendor, uh, Solitude Life Management, came out with much the best um, uh, replies both in terms of budget and in terms of technical contact so we have we've stayed with them um, and they uh, wrote us a um, spy pond management plan it was late but uh, we now have it for for the following year and um, and they also uh, did uh, two surveys in the spring and the fall just for what plants are in uh, spy pond um, we have a big, big project, the CPA funds um, for shoreline restoration. Um, you've, if you've been in Spy Pond Park, um, it's, quite, it's quite visible. They're both uh, restoring the bank and they're restoring above the buffer zone above the bank. And um, the one project that still needs to be done on that is to finish the, um, the wheelchair accessible platform to uh, be, be, be near the pond. Um, the pond was lowered because of that, um, and it was a banner year. We have a rare plant on Spy Pond, um, the Engelman's Umbrella Sedge, and um, it was Engelman's Umbrella Sedge was very happy, and um, there's lots of it. If you ever wanted to look at sedges last year, this year was the time to do it. Um, the uh, Spy Pond Committee also did a, uh, a, a tree planting, we planted 45 dogwoods along the Route 2 path. And uh, if, you, if you're walking in there, about, they're about in the middle with the wire cages. We're hopeful that most of those will survive uh, next year. Uh, the, 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 you know, treating, treat, dealing with spy pond is still an issue. 
Um, it was basically unusable during the months of uh, end of Ju the last half of June and the first half of July. Um, in this case, it was uh, curly leaf pond weed. Um, our Eurasian milfoil that historically has been a big problem, for some reason that seems to have abated. Um, I, it's still in the pond, there's still plants, but it's no longer a, a lot of it. And um, as you may know, the pond was closed uh, due to some algae blooms, and we, had, we needed to do two treatments um, uh, with cooperation from the Arlington Board of Health. Um, so that's, uh, you know, we're still trying to figure this pond out and what's the best way to take care of it. Uh, my expectation is we'll try to do two treatments next year, um, probably on a smaller scale. Um, we're still, we need to see what comes up and, and uh, talk with uh, Solitude as to what's the best plan going forward. Any questions? So uh, I remember from a few years back, two years back, I think uh, Bill I can't was making daily water measurements of the. Pond. Not daily. He he goes out um it, it, he goes out probably half a dozen times a year, and so what happens with those measurements? Um, he keeps track of them, uh, and we have a, we have a, a spreadsheet that he that he sends around to us to the spy pond committee on the mailing list. But, but I mean, are they analyzed? Do we know what's there? Does it, There's, does those are, react to any, any what of the he, data? What he does is the Seki disk, <coughs> which is um, basically water clarity. And it, it, it varies quite a bit. Um, it's hard to, you know, there's no, this is, a, this is clearly a problem kind of sense. Um, the one conclusion that you really can get in this is very, quite obvious is that the uh, spy pond is what's called eutrophic. It's got too much fertilizer. And in fact, what we did this year was um, I went out onto the pond with a 12 foot, you know, basically a pole, wooden pole, and tried to find the bottom of, of the muck that's, that's, that's the sediment. And there's, uh, I couldn't find the bottom. So there's at least eight feet of, of really rich organic muck <coughs> underneath the water, particularly in the sill between the north and south basin. Thank you. You should dredge it. Sell it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also got some, <coughs> some got arsenic, arsenic from, from, from the attempt to solve these problems Years ago. Um, in the 60s and 70s. In the 60s. Oh, please. Well, nothing's perfect. Huh? Nothing's perfect. <laughs> nothing is perfect. Okay, we, so we'll, we'll figure it. something out. Are there any questions on Spy Pond? Peter? What about the sandbar? Oh, oh yes, very the good. Sandbar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A, a big project yes. that we've been, um, uh, 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 the Spy Pond Committee, in particular Steve Ritchie and some of the others, have been pushing for longer than I've been here. So a, a long, long time. Mm -hmm. The sandbar. Is, is now a problem. It's actually now broken the surface of Spy Pond. It's been growing for quite a while. Um, there's at least 10 feet of sand in the sandbar. And in fact, I've talked to the people who live right on the corner of Route 2 and Spy Pond, a nice, nice family. Um, the whole family's there. So I've, I've talked both with the daughter and her dad. And um, when they moved into that house, they used to dive off the bank into six feet of water, and now there's this big sandbar. Um, Mass DOT has, um, with, with encouragement from some of our neighbors, some of the uh, butters, um, has uh, has taken on this project, and we've got a fabulous person, Brian Pedrario, who's taken on this his project. He got the money um, uh, reserved, um, so it's. There's a pot that, that comes in once a year from the, um, from the federal government to deal with environmental issues. And um, they've gotten it through the Army Corps of Engineers. They did a public meeting last week. And uh, the plan is to put it out for bid and to, um, and to uh, uh, dredge, remove the top three feet off of the sandbar 
so it'll go down significantly below the water level and also rework the there's a, a gigantic pipe if you if you've walked down um, the entire hillside um, all of the storm water comes through one pipe and during a storm event it's it's quite a rush of water it currently is all directed right into the sandbar and it's what was almost surely the cause of that sandbar likely next winter they'll do that next next uh, fall mm -hmm. and then um, you know, if you're using the path the path will be will be retained but most of it will be taken up with um, there's going to be a thousand feet of geo tubes which are five foot by nine foot tubes <coughs> in a um, trough to dry the sediment the they're, they're, they're taking sediment. out before yeah. they can yeah. <coughs> so hopefully hopefully this time next year we'll be talking about the completion of that. that's right well more than completion yeah. we won't yeah. see it right. <laughs> It'll be gone. any other questions on spy pond Okay. okay. Mystic um, River. Mystic River. Um, you may remember we talked about this last year. Um, for those of you who may not remember, we had a uh, spill of almost 10,000 gallons of fuel oil on the Mystic River in 2013. It's taken us this long to, to do a project on it, but that's the way it goes. Um, the town won a grant, wrote and won a grant, a natural resource damages grant to improve the habitat and climate change resilience and um, stormwater management and water quality in the area that was directly impacted by the oil spill. We finally completed it last year. The last piece of the project was a community planting event. This is in an, um, an environmental justice area in the town of Arlington. And we um, coordinated with the third grade students at the Thompson School. We got them all walking down there and planting um, plants, uh, small plants that uh, could improve the habitat there, uh, riparian habitat right near the river. They had a great time. We talked a little bit about what happened, what was the spill, what did we do about it, why is it important, and um, they were just so excited. We gave them a little plant to take home as well, and they kept asking, can we come back and look at our plants here? I said, please do. Come take care of them. Remove any trash you see. You know, take care of it. So it was very exciting. We also installed an educational sign in that area, um, and we had a celebration of the completion of the event with the um, several different um, regulatory agencies and parties that we coordinated with to get this done, including um, DCR, um, Mass DP, um, the Arlington DPW, um, Park and Rec, and the Conservation Commission. Um, so we also had a compassion <coughs> project um, that we did with DCR in the town to put a, an improved stormwater scepter up uh, above where the um, the stormwater comes in, so that we can clean it more of it out before it actually reaches the river, and have um, better water quality and more clarity, which we we're seeing in that area now. So that was a success. That project is completed, um, other than to just monitor for the health of the habitat and the plantings that we. Any questions on that? <coughs> Is the what's been the latest quality rating of the Mr. Cover? Um, I believe it's A minus. Yes, A minus. Okay. As oh, okay, as of 2018. Yep. Uh, difference between the upper Mystic and the lower Mystic? Um, the upper Mystic. Uh, are you talking about the lake or the river? The, the lake. The lake. The, the lakes actually have A or A minus as well. They are yeah. very good water quality. The problem with the lakes, and I'm glad you mentioned this yes, because it segues into the next thing we were going to talk about, um, is that we've got uh, invasive plant problems in Mystic Lakes. And though the water quality itself is very good, the water quality ratings, I don't know if you're familiar with what they're based on. So the EPA ratings are only based on bacteria, okay? They're not based on chemicals, they're not based on nutrient levels, they're not based on turbidity, 
or secondary. Vegetation. They're, or vegetation, or invasives versus natives. They're only based on bacteria. And though that's an important indicator, it's not the end all and be all of a healthy ecosystem as we know. So, in the, in the um, upper Mystic Lakes, um, we have invasive plants that cause problems, cause problems for recreation, cause problems for competing with native plants in the environment. Um, and we have a perennially approved chemical control of these invasives in different permits because a lot of these permits are for private landowners. Some of them are more public, like the Medford Boat Club, for example, which is on Mystic Lake, which comes to the Arlington Conservation Commission for permitting because yeah. their part is on the Arlington side. Um, and all of these are using chemical controls as their number one approach. And so what we're looking at now, um, one of our goals in the Water Bodies Program is to look for a more comprehensive management approach where chemicals aren't always the number one go-to um, to, to take care of these invasives. And um, one way to look at this also is to coordinate with the Resilient Mystic Collaborative, which is a bunch of different communities um, that's being coordinated by uh, Myra, Mystic River Watershed Association, and Emily is our representative on that, and she can talk a minute about that yeah. approach. Yeah. Just uh, one thing on, the, on, on your question about the health of the Mystic Lakes. Um, uh, one really good news, uh, Mystic Fair River Watershed yeah. Association is doing fabulous work. They've really expanded their programs, mm -hmm. um, working on greenways and working on the Herring, herring Run. Right. And the Herring Run, sort of unbelievable, is getting up the Evershawnee Ab Ab River into Winchester, into Horn Pond. They're actually getting alewife way, way up, um, going through culverts. So that's a, a big sign. Yeah, and so that's a sign that, that it's healthy. However, we don't want to keep using chemicals and potentially affect the young fish that are spawning there. <coughs> So we're, we, there's a balance here, and um, that's why we're in this collaborative. Yeah. Um, so the Resilient Mystic Collaborative, it's a, it's a relatively new uh, collaboration uh, between all of, or 19 out of the 21 uh, Mystic River watershed communities. Um, the, the focus right now is more so on uh, stormwater, and so uh, we have talked a little bit about, you know, like, storm scepters or rain gardens, and, and so the, the Watershed Association of the Mystic, the Resilient Mystic is really looking at uh, trying to find our opportunities for, for large-scale infrastructure um, interventions to improve water quality going into um, the tributaries of the Mystic River. The, right now, the collaborative is not so much looking at holistic management, I, I'd say like, like chemical treatment or mechanical treatment of the Mystic Lakes or the Mystic River, but more so trying to uh, go kind of a step before that and, and look more so at storm water quality because as we mentioned, with uh, places like Spy Pond and Arlington Reservoir, a lot of the eutrophication in the invasive species uh, that we're seeing are so successful because of the increased uh, nutrient loading from stormwater runoff. I think that absolutely in the future, uh, trying to coordinate all of the, the Mystic Lakes communities around more of a holistic uh, management is feasible, especially with the assistance of the Mystic River Watershed Association. So that's something that the Water Bodies Working Group um, has agreed to, to try to initiate that conversation and kind of start that partnership. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know if this is directly on the subject or not, but. Uh, there are several times tonight people have talked about intervention for stormwater uh, problems mm -hmm. and, and the nutrients and all the things that are getting into these water bodies. But where does the water go? I mean, what, what sort of intervention can you do? Does it have to go into these bodies? Absolutely. That's a great question. And so a lot of the interventions, they're um, engineered interventions. So it's something uh, that it, it still lets the water flow through and, and eventually go to these water bodies, but it might detain the water and, and you know, let the nutrients kind of settle out until the water flows and it's less contaminated, or uh, you know, somehow you know, kind of engineer the nutrients to be removed or to Fil filter lessen. It, it, to fil exactly, it's like filtering systems. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any kind of uh, 
public education on the types of fertilizers people use on their lawns and such? Another great question. So the Spy Pond Committee is huge with that. They, they uh, pass out flyers for at least the communities in the Spy Pond watershed. I know uh, recently the, the Conservation Commission, uh, every permit that's issued, uh, there's a condition about what type of fertilizer is allowed to be used on the property as permanent. So there's, uh, I'd say it's a bit of a, a fragmented effort to try to educate uh, people about what type of fertilizers are appropriate, like uh, slow phosphorus uh, releasing uh, fertilizers. And also though, um, the engineering division did hold a, a public uh, education session for landscapers in town to talk about fertilizer and the use of fertilizer. So no. there are several, uh, I guess, tactics being deployed for education. Uh, is there any material oh, like on yeah, that, that will say, use this, don't use this? Uh, yes. There, uh, for every fertilizer bag uh, says what, what type of fertilizer should be used. And then there are actually state laws. Well, I'm sorry, fertilizer bag? Give the handouts. Uh, well, I, so like when you purchase a fertilizer, it will tell you like what's on it. But the town does have content and information about what uh, fertilizer is appropriate for what types of soil and, and what type of property. So what what we do have on the Spy Pond Committee, um, we actually just designed our, our this year's uh, fertilizer flyer, and that will go to um, every. It, it's it, the distribution is in about a month and it will go to every household in, um, in the Spy Pond watershed. And will that basically say, please use? So, it's, so the most important is to use uh, no phosphate fertilizer, um, but it's also a matter of, um, of when you use it. Too. When you use it, uh, not, putting, not putting fertilizer on, on hard surface, um, you know, making sure it stays just on the grass. Uh, and worrying about dog waste and all of the other other contributions. Is that something you could email to the committee? Sure, sure. I can send you send you a PDF. Okay. Could you send it to Liz? And Liz, could you send it out? Uh, the reason I ask is uh, I'm on the board of a condo complex that's right on Mill, Mill Brook, and so we're hiring a landscaping contract for oh, uh, next year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, if we can put some restrictions, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. The, yes. the big, the big, the biggest one is a fertilizer on established lawns. Um, you do not need phosphorus, which is that middle number. Um, almost always, you've got plenty. It's just the nitrogen and potassium that you need. I think you bring up an excellent point, though, is that we have this flyer for Spy Pond community. Why not? distribute it more widely because it's useful for other areas in town as well. So I think we can talk about how we can do that. We, we did look, uh, we, we've also looked into, um, uh, there was a big project, I guess about uh, 15 years ago, to put uh, stickers on all of the drains yep. in, um, uh, to, to uh, say basically say anything that you, so every single drain stormwater drain in Arlington um, and you can there's some movies on the on the on the uh, on the web if you put a rubber duck into that drain that rubber duck is going to appear on a water bottle every single you know they, it doesn't just disappear it goes to a water bottle and um, so we, we did about 15 years ago they put stickers with uh, the with the high school I went looking for that effort and unfortunately um, I found one sticker in good shape uh, it turned out that they, they it was a uh, the kids love to uh, take them as souvenirs really yeah, yeah. Mm. so it's it's that's that's a call you know whether that's worth repeating I, I have found out how to do it but it's a matter of rivets and disappeared yeah, yeah. okay any other questions Okay, uh, in terms of stormwater control, we're also in things like rain gardens. Yeah, Emily? Yeah, so uh, the, the town received a, a state grant to uh, install rain gardens and then like uh, <coughs> underground trenches, so, so like those filters that we mentioned, uh, in East Arlington to improve uh, the stormwater runoff going into Illwife Brook. So we should... Uh, so we're going to get some more, right? Yeah, so we're getting some more. Oh. Um, Elwith Brook is always a, a tough uh, water body because of combined sewer overflows in adjacent communities. Uh, 
releasing contamination into the brook, thereby impacting water quality. Okay, is that again? Oh, Special. That's that, that, just that. That's just that. There will be more rain gardens in our future. What's the status as far as Somerville and Cambridge closing off their uh, combined strong water or sewer pipes? Um, I, I, so the, that's always something I think they're working on. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the MWRA and uh, you know their responsibility to uh, remedy Belmont. that. Uh, Belmont too, yeah, yeah. Belmont and. Um, yeah. So I think the efforts lost a little bit of steam in the past year, but I I know that. Uh, you know, the Mystic River Watershed, Watershed Association is always huge advocates for improving CSOs or, you know, uh, closing them and improving the stormwater uh, drainage system. I don't know that they have anything lined up for the existing CSOs that still uh, flow to Ale Lake. We, we, we do have a big thank, uh, thank you to whoever was the engineer back when, who, when they built Arlington's. Sewer systems. Do not combine them. Do not combine them. Do not combine the sewers. Okay. Are, are there any other questions? Alan? The, um, the spreadsheet has a, a $55,000 appropriation mm -hmm. for next year. Uh, what do, you, do you need to fix the warrant? It's a different number. So the warrant, remember, we're not voting on the warrant. We'll vote on our motion. I just yeah, but it's inconsistent. I just didn't know whether we want to make them. Does it have a number? Should we have a number? No, the warrant has a number in it. We yeah, the warrant's going to vote on the warrant. We submitted Article sixty five. We when we submitted the warrant article, we did we put no number in. We didn't put a number in, so I was I guess this is news to us that there's a number in the warrant article. Okay, so can that is there a way to take that number out before it's published? I I don't know. Somebody so keeps number. inserting numbers in these warrant articles when they shouldn't. Um, yeah, that uh, happened last year, yeah. What is the number? I mean, uh, 60, 65. Okay, well. Like a mm -hmm. yeah. Should be left open until. I, I didn't know if it was possible <coughs> to get it out and we'll get the number. Well, I'll, I'll talk to the Slackman's office tomorrow. Yeah. Of course, Robert. Last year was not possible, but maybe this early we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. We don't know where, where that came from. You know, yeah. Somehow. Slips into these things. <laughs> Submit something and it changes. So a total request is fifty-five thousand. Our expenses are likely to be anticipated to be sixty-eight thousand, which brings the global fund balance down in this week. Okay. Any other questions on the water bodies? Okay. Well, thank you very much. This has been as informative as it was last year. Thank you. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. More this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Emily, you have the email. bodies in front of us, the request is for uh, 55,000. Uh, if you remember correctly, I think that was the request last year, but the number that went into the warrant was 50. And so they had to drop their request down. And so this is sort of what, what they were thinking of over the last two years. Uh, any discussion? If not, a motion. Okay, move for 55. Okay, second. Discussion. Christine? I'm going to vote for it, but I continue to be concerned about the, re the large reserve that they keep carrying and rolling over. Um. Yeah, they do have a plan that's kind of It's all spent next year. Coming up. Yeah, it's, cut, it's about cut in half. I read this for, well, wait a minute. Look, it's spent in uh, mm -hmm. FY22. It goes yeah. away. 56,000 is five pound sonar treatment reserve, which is in FY21, shows up to 56,000 in the FY22 budget as an expense. So 
it appears that they're using it. Yeah, fiscal 22, it drops big time. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. As I recall, they didn't bring that up this time, but I think, don't they carry that reserve because the timing of the spy fund, of the spy fund treatment isn't predictable? I believe that had been explained before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking up Y22, it's spent. That's one of the 56 hours we spent. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded for 55,000 for Article 65 for the water bodies. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action, unanimous. Okay. <coughs> Welcome, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Sleep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had asked the manager to come back and, and basically go through all his, his articles, which is now. By the way, do you know? Uh, this is the second year this has happened. Water Bodies puts in a, a thing that says to appropriate a sum of money, and Sony puts in a dollar figure. Do you know where that comes from? <coughs> So I, I, I think the history is, and maybe Peter could tell me that, Jane Howard, who used to be very involved, likes to have a number to guarantee that there would be a certain number there. Uh, but it's not just this, but it happens also. Oh, yeah, it, it's happening throughout the warrant. In other words, they put in, and same thing last year, they put in to appropriate a sum of money, and then somebody put in 50000 They wanted fifty five. Yeah. And the moderator ruled that, that 50 was the max they could have. Uh, but somebody, between the time the articles are submitted and they get in the warrant, is, sub is substituting numbers. We, we, submit they, we submit what they send to us. So they, we, I can talk with them, but they, they'll, they need to clean up what they're asking for. Because all, that, all the town council puts in is what they, they send to town council. No, no one is making up numbers in between. <laughs> Oh, it's just the second year in a row that had the same story, so. I'm, I'm, I'm positive that they, what they ask for is, is what it's Okay. I mean, they have the right to change their mind. I think it serves the argument of, let's just take the number out. There's no, I don't think no, there isn't. It takes away their flexibility. <coughs> I agree. Okay. Um, so we, uh, now, of course, all the article numbers have changed. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's start off this. Um, article 7, which is now Article 8. Oh, no, it's Article 9. Bylaw, Bylaw Amendment, Bikeway Hours. I think somebody had a question on this. If there was any, uh, if you foresaw, first of all, what do they want to do, if you know? And do you saw any current or future costs? So the Arlington Bike Advisory Committee, ABAC, came before the select board at its last meeting. Uh, after doing quite a bit of work on this and proposed changing bikeway hours from what I believe is dawn to dusk, or I think it's listed right now as dawn to dusk, and move it to 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. to match more closely with the actual usage of the bikeway for commuting times. And Sounds like it's late, but it, people do actually commute that late. Uh, the select board uh, voted favorably, though uh, board member Curo suggested that the hours entirely be taken out of the bylaws and be set um, be set by the town manager, which the board thought favorably is uh, was a, was a good idea as well. However, town council wasn't sure if the language of this article was broad enough to allow for that change. So he was going to talk to the moderator to determine that. One way or the other, though, the select board was planning on taking favorable action to either extend them to the hours that AVAC was recommending or moving to take it out of the bylaw <coughs> with simultaneously me saying that I would be setting them at the hours that AVAC was recommending. Adam, what are the implications of having operating hours? So, of having them at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what, what is the purpose of? 
So at the, it becomes a police matter of how comfortable they are having some expectation of policing the stretch and not wanting to advertise that we think people should be on there 24 hours a day. Um, they, they drafted a memo, which I, I don't have with me, but basically describing those hours between 11 a.m. and 5 a.m. as target hard make and saying, let, let, you know, let's not say we're comfortable with people being out there and advertising that it's open during, during those hours where there's not a lot of traffic, uh, not, you know, very little visibility because there's no, there's no lighting and not saying that we want people out there. And is there signage anywhere that posts those hours? I think there's signage on some of the openings that says what the hours are. Not a lot of signage though. I think if we, if this was, if this passed, we would probably have that signage. Charlie? Right. So if we, we if the police were aware of the people using it between certain, going, going to dusk right now. Yes. So now if we operate to 11 p.m. and dusk is at 5 p.m., does that mean that uh, we have to have some sort of police presence for those hours that we didn't have before? Is there a cost to that? So we don't, I mean, we, we do bike patrols in the summertime along the bikeway and, and bikeway and bike patrols in general. Uh, but we don't, uh, the, the chief doesn't feel as though we'd be adding any further patrols. We, we don't have bike patrols out, you know, at, at 8 o'clock now in the summertime uh, patrolling it. So she, she doesn't feel like there would be any cost. The only um, future cost implication that I think is fair to consider is that as we make more official nighttime usage of the bike path, I think there's already been an existing call for lighting portions of the bike path. I think we'll see that amplify a little bit. So I could see in a future year there being more consideration of whether or not certain stretch stretches of the bike path should be lit. So I, that's not part of this request. It's not part of the five-year capital budget today. But I could see there being community interest in in years to come. Hey, Peter. Uh, as a matter of history, had a, the, um, when the bike path was designed, um, that issue was discussed. Um, should we include lighting or not? And keep the cost down, no lighting. Uh, understood from the beginning that it would not be lighting. So I, I guess I'd say two things. I'm not advocating for lighting. No, no. I get, I, I'm, a lot of people write to me today asking for lighting. I'll also say, from the time the bike path opened till today, the population in Arlington has probably turned over by about 70 to 80 percent. So, relying simply on the establishment of the bike path and saying there'd be no lighting isn't a, isn't a direct translation to the people who live here and use the bike path. This great John? Uh, and would there be any potential liability if we officially extend the hours into? Uh, when it's dark and do not provide lighting? Um, I could double check with town council. He hasn't suggested that there would be any, uh, but I could, I could ask him. Would you get a shirt an email back to Liz on that issue? It doesn't have to be a short thing. Um, Charlie? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, as I recall, there's been a number of contentious articles in town meeting for the last several years with respect to lighting. And if we put lighting on the bike path, it's almost certainly going to be shining on all of the homes along the side of the bike path. I mean, that seems to be uh, asking for trouble. Yeah, I, I mean, I tend to agree with you. I, I'm more sympathetic to people who are concerned about the lighting around Thorndike Park, because uh, that can be a particularly uncomfortable area for people to walk from where Varnum dumps into the path over to Alewife, and that's an area where there's less houses close by. Uh, but I think you're right. Usually when I reply to residents who write to me, I say, I, I say what Peter said and what you said, that it was a long, long, long time ago we talked about this, there was an understanding there wouldn't be lights, and there are obviously a butter concern. So I, 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 to be clear, I'm not saying that we should be promoting it. I'm just saying we should all have eyes open that an, an already existing drum beat could grow louder. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay, so uh, is any, uh, well, well, we'll discuss this afterwards. So uh, I'm suggesting we, we not hear this article, let the select and handle it 
Okay, Article 11, which is now Article 12. And the only reason this caught our eye, this is the amendment stormwater management uh, to update such bylaw removal of definitions and adjust fees. The adjust fees jumped up. Yep, of course. Is there any, uh, what fees do we collect for stormwater management? Is it connection fees? Uh, no, so when someone is uh, doing a construction on their property, rebuilding, or doing a significant renovation that qualifies under the stormwater bylaw, they have to file plans to be reviewed and receive a permit from the Affairing Division. That currently costs $25. Under the recommendations that engineering and planning are making, uh, there's a whole set of recommendations they're making for us to become in compliance with this, the federal MS4 permit. They're asking that we take the fees out of the bylaw and allow them to be set by the engineering division with the, my approval and the director of public works approval to be more in line with how long it takes or the, the cost of actually reviewing the plans. And engineering says that it takes about eight hours of an engineer's staff time to review plans in regards to storm. That would probably be, I mean, that, that would come out to over $300, which would probably be a little pricey. So engineering is saying uh, they're looking at a, at a fee of around $100 for this particular plan. I, I, I think I want to talk to them a little bit more about that. But the, the, the general case precedent is you can't set fees higher than what it costs uh, to produce the permit. Or license or whatever. Any questions? Okay. Uh, Article 12, uh, which is now 13. Mm -hmm. I think this is the brookline statute, mm -hmm. for want of a better term. Uh, I guess the only question that came up here uh, would this affect municipal buildings, like the high school? So, yes, the, 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 way, the way the current proposal is drafted, yes. The way the Brookline proposal was adopted, yes. Uh, interestingly enough, the high school as designed would meet what's being proposed under this bylaw. There will be no, uh, there'll be no gas infrastructure uh, aside from actually this small gas line for Bunsen burners uh, feeding the high school. So the high school will be fine. Um, better question about the Central School, which is actually starting very soon, so that won't be impacted. We, do, we need to tie up a few loose ends with the DPW project to determine whether or not there would be applicability. Mm -hmm. The projects I think more about are the projects we've discussed in regards to expanding the Robbins Library and a rebuild of the Fox Library. And just, I don't know that I need to use the word impact, but if this was to pass and be adopted or uh, approved by the Attorney General, those buildings would have to be designed. Okay. Any uh, any other questions, Charlie? Does this affect private building construction? Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So uh, is that going to have a, a cost impact on uh, new development? So the, the numbers that I've seen, and I and I think there's more work to be done on this to make sure that we're all that we, that we believe it's all credible. Is that if you're building new, which this mostly will impact new construction. If you're building new, designing from scratch, putting electric heat pump heat sources in is pretty much cost neutral from a fossil fuel. To putting in a gas pump, that, that's that's what I that's what I've read. That's what I'm told. But I, I think we need to see a little more of that to determine. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Uh, Dean. So I'm just reading this, and I know the final vote might be different. But if you're prohibiting the installation of fossil fuel infrastructure, that means the gas pump at the DPW yard has to go in the new project. So we can't pump gas into a truck. So the, I, I'm confident the wording of we'll come out. the bylaw itself is specific to structures and not, um, not auto fueling, but that's a, that's a fair it's point. It's not a structure? Picture. Well, it's not, it's not a, a building, right? It's not, it's not an inhabitable building. Have this one been heard this article yet? No, March 9th. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. And so, how do you feel about this? 
Right. I'm just saying, I'm deciding the first thing to say. Uh, I, I think it is the future of heating and cooling homes. Mm -hmm. I think if we have any shot at getting to net zero by 2050, which the town is committed to, this has to be a part of it. I think finding ways to, by via carrot or stick, get people and institutions, including the town, to move off of fossil fuels is part of it. Um, I'm not at all confident that the Attorney General is going to approve Brookline's bylaw. Mm. Um, I am not an attorney, I'm not, so I don't, I, I get a little hesitant to weigh in, but it, it seems to me that this could very much be trying to supersede the building code. So I think, I think this is a good policy discussion. I think we should have the debate and the proponents should put it forward. Um, but I think we're all very curious to see what the Attorney General's office says what they rule on Brooklyn's well. Yes. When, do you know when that's scheduled? So they have 90 days from the time it was submitted, and I think it was submitted either late December or early January. And I believe the Attorney General asked for an additional 90-day period, so they're expecting a ruling sometime. Any other questions on 13? Okay. Um, article 20. Six. Article 27. Oh, 27. Excuse me. Uh, article 27, retired all uh, police officers in for detail. Christine, I think you have a question? Yeah, I had a bunch of questions. Like why and what will the cost be? What are uh, these people going to be, uh, are they going to be in uniform? Are we paying for the uniform? Are they going to carry guns? Are they with training? And um, Genesis of this and so the genesis of this is a request uh, in bargaining made by the ranking officers union and we agreed as part of that bargaining to bring this forward for town meeting consideration uh, I will say for years and years we've had a lot of trouble. yeah we uh, for years and years we've had a lot of trouble filling uh, details we often have to go to other towns for their officers to come to town to, to work the details and sometimes we even have details that go unfilled and it can slow down, it can slow down contr road construction projects, gas line replacement, gas main repair. Uh, so I would say from where, from where I sit, I have an interest in expanding the pool of uh, people that can work details. Uh, I, I, I talked to the chief, I talked with Sandy. I don't think there's any town financial impact here. Uh, the details that either the town would be hiring, we would be hiring anyways, the details that private contractors would be hiring, they would be hiring anyways. And uh, this would just divvy up who is working those details uh, differently than it is now. So they, they would be uh, police officers. They would carry a gun. Uh, the chief would have a set of standards that they would have to adhere to. I, sitting here tonight, I don't know the answer about their uniforms, but I can find that out. So these would be officers, say, between 55 and will be an age women? Yeah, I believe it. I'm uh, sorry, 65 to 65. According to this requested bylaw, it says that if you are obtain the age of 65, that's your mandatory retirement, you couldn't participate in this. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. Okay, so if you're a retired police officer and are between 55 and 65. And I, I, and I will say, and I, I don't offer this as a justification, but I do know this is commonplace across the Commonwealth. It's not, um, you know, we wouldn't be the only ones doing it. It's, it's, I, it's not innovative or new. Mm -hmm. Okay, David and then Dean. If they're going to be special police officers, Adam, doesn't that mean that they have to have in-service training once a year? Yes. So that's a cost factor. Let me, I think they have to pay for that. They being the 
they be in the, yeah. the special police office? Or, or just attend without, uh, without pay to qualify to do this. It, it appears to me that it's only for a certain group. The farmer is, the, the, to, to get an 80% retirement for a police or fireman, it's 55 and 32. Yeah. 55 years of age, 32 years of service. Now you can include now your military time up to four years. But if you, if you're, if you, if you stay on the job to 65, you can't work details because according to this bylaw, you, you, you're retired. Mandatory retirement, it says mandatory retirement. That, that's what I read in this bylaw. Uh. I don't think this says that you have to retire at 55. No, but that's that's true. Say that again. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think. I think it says that the mandatory retirement age of 65, not 55. That's what I said. 65. So in other words, when you're paying the age, if you stayed on the job to your 65, yeah. you couldn't then become a special police officer and work details. Correct. Because you're retired. Correct. Okay. Now another question would come up: If you went out on a disability pension, could you work details? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Okay, but it doesn't say that yet. I, I think it's it's pension law that would dictate that, but right. if adding that specificity is important, we can look at that. Um, again, it appears to me it's only for a certain group of officers that will opt to take an early retirement. Uh, I want to be clear. A, a, a police officer retiring at 55 is not an early retirement. A police officer retiring at 55 is a superannuated, fully benefited I, I, retirement. I'm sorry, this a, a police officer retiring at 55 is not an early retirement. By definition, an early retirement would be retiring before, before you're the age where you're eligible to max out. I, I just don't want to make it seem like there's, right. there's an but, extra benefit coming right. to people by retiring. The majority of officers do not retire at 55. The majority of officers. Maybe once in a while you m might get one that hits the magical 55, 32 and wants to go. But the majority of officers, they might re retire cl closer to 59 or 60 rather than, so it, 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 narrows, the, it narrows your group down as to who's going to be eligible to work these details. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. How many times do you have to go out of town? Uh, in, in the summertime concert. Now, this wouldn't, uh, if a lieutenant uh, wanted to take, retired and wanted to take advantage of this, what salary would he be paid at? <coughs> would he be paid at a Leave patrolman's? Paid just the detail rate. Yeah. Just the he, detail, he, flat if it, detail. If it's an outside detail, he would be paid at whatever the current detail, outside detail okay, rate Okay, and the is. detail rate doesn't make a difference between patrolman and lieutenant? Uh, Outside detail, no. Right. Yes. Okay. However, on outside detail, if you hire more than three men, you have to hire, hire a, a ranking officer to supervise the three men. That's where it becomes. Do we have that very often? Yes. Uh, for OBF? Yeah, yeah, for a big project, yeah. The, the other thing is, this idea of hiring outside police officers to work in here, that has been going on for years. That's never going to stop. Each community, it's up to each community whether they want to participate in that program or not. For years, Arlington didn't, and then they decided to. And, and for, for officers missing details, it's all by choice. If you get a telephone call and say, hey, hey Dave, you, know, you want to work a gas detail at Massac Grove Street? No. Oh, yes. And they get to a point, you have so many officers working, so many officers going to court, so many officers on vacation, that that's why the, the uh, so, so many officers say no to the detail. That's when you happen, when, when the details then become unfilled. Then, so the argument years ago was, if we can get officers from outside to come, would that be allowable? And eventually they said yes. I mean, we have officers that's all the way from Bill Ricker. But you can see that same Bill Ricker cop over in Watertown. Or you might see that same Bill Ricker cop in Medford. It, it's all around us. I don't think Cambridge allows it. Do, do they, Adam? You know what I mean? I don't think they do. See, Cambridge is, um, Somerville does, Medford does, Winchester does, Lexington does. 
in the town of Lexington, the majority of people doing police details in Lexington are special police officers, not regular police officers. That, that's been going on for, for at least 50 years. So it, it, it's a little different. But going back to this article, it, it narrows the, the scope of who's eligible to, to work these details. It definitely narrows it down. Well, it, it expands it because it's not allowed now. No, no. I'm, well, these, these same officers that are, are working details now. So what you're saying to me, if I, if, if I retire at 55 and, and 32, okay, I can, st I can still stay, I can work details. Well, that's a small group that's going to be eligible to retire at that, that magical formula. Like I say, most people that work, it's 55 years of, uh, 55, 59 years of age and 32 years of service. What throws in a little mix now is because they, that you can add in your, if you have military time, you could add into it retirement purpose for four additional years. Now, my Maximum understanding four. is detail doesn't count towards pension. It does not. Okay. Dean? I'm good for now. Okay. Anybody <coughs> else? Grant? Um, he's ahead of me, but I'll take it for now. Uh, <laughs> take it. Um, so, okay. the idea of this is to uh, not go out of town for the officers. How many Arlington officers are you expecting to be in this pool? Of retired to, to be available for these details I don't have I, I don't know how many would be interested I think it would probably be a pool of only maybe 10 or 15 people it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a huge pool and this is of Arlington of Arlington like re retired recently enough that oh. they're not yet 65. okay, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, John yeah I just wanted to go back to this issue of, of cost to the town um, in terms of applying with requirements and if I'm reading section five correctly, what it says is that the special officers will have to comply with all the requirements of the police department, including training, medical exams, uniforms, and equipment. And then it says compliance will be at no cost yeah. to the town of Arlington. That's, that's, what I, that's what I thought. Thank you for pointing out that it says that. OK, anybody else? OK. Uh, Okay, that, those articles were basically there to decide if the Finance Committee wanted to hear them or make any kind of a recommendation. Uh, the next articles are actually Finance Committee articles. Uh, okay. Oh. 49. So uh, I got a number on this from uh, Sandy. What's the status of collective bargaining? When do the most of the contracts run out? What are the holdups, and what, what's with them? So all units, but the patrol officers unit, <coughs> is, are settled through FY21. So the upcoming budget year. The uh, so we'll frankly be starting another round of bargaining for FY22 not all that long from now. The patrol officers have not settled. Uh, we are in the early stages of the JLMC, that's the state level arbitration for public safety unions. We're in mediation with them right now before we actually go to the full-blown arbitration. So we, there was actually a, a pretty long mediation session earlier this week. Um, and we'll probably mediate several times again before it advances to the next stage in the process. Um, the the, the holdup is not coming to agreement on, on terms, without, without saying much more than that. OK, are there any questions on this? Just one, uh, Adam, how long has it been since they settled the contract? Is it two years or three? Right now, we're, we're coming up on two years. So we're. July 1 starts the third year of the contract that everyone else is in, so we're, we're coming up on it being two years without a contract. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I think you have the figure, 200. Okay, 251,000? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, 52. Do you have the parking benefit district so we are we're finalizing uh, we're finalizing some expenditure estimates and revenue estimates 
Um, I can tell you that revenues are coming in uh, surpassing our FY20 projections for the parking meters in the center and the, and the lots in the meters. Um, last year, we had asked for and it was approved putting all the money uh, and some prior years parking benefit district money towards the Arlington Center sidewalk project. Uh, it's likely that we will ask for further monies from the parking benefit district for the sidewalk project as part of the FY21 expenditures as well as some operational costs still focused on sidewalk cleaning and uh, planter and tree watering in the center as well. But I, I, I can get you the sheet we gave you last year but just the next couple of days. Okay, so you'll send that to Liz and she'll send it out. Okay, so um, you're planning on redoing some of the brick sidewalks. So we've fully designed and are ready, very soon ready to go out to bid to redo the brick sidewalks, basically from Franklin up to the intersection of Mass, Mystic, and Pleasant, uh, to, to completely concrete sidewalks with uh, a stamped concrete colored brick trim uh, while also redoing Broadway Park. Yep, the same as East Arlington? Similar, except it will be stamped to look exactly like bricks and not the larger panels like East Arlington. What are you going to get up the next block? Because that's where I have to shovel in front of the church. <laughs> so I think once, once we get this done, we'll, we'll start a planning process for the next block. And okay. the next block is more likely to qualify for state funding. Uh, we've, we've met with MassDOT, and they feel like from Mass Mystic and Pleasant westbound to Bartlett is a good complete streets and or Mass dot participating project because we would be doing likely be doing more with the roadway to make it safer than we'd be doing for the stretch we're talking about now. Questions, Dean? Well, it's more of a comment, not to tell you what to say, but um, on the bricks that are being moved, I think it would be wor it's worthy to note that while they're beautiful, my recollection is that the Disability Commission identifies the current small bricks as a mobility hazard for people. Like, it's very difficult to walk around, and so by getting rid of them, these like small, cute little bricks that are possible to walk on, um, depending on who you are, the bigger things that you're putting in actually give people more access to walk right. down the street. Right. And like I said, I used to think the bricks were great until I had to shovel the walks, yeah. <laughs> and then they're a pain in the neck to do. Uh, other questions? Comments? Okay, so you'll uh, you'll send the exact budget in, uh, and uh, we'll get back to you if you have any questions on it. Any other questions on brick sidewalks? Oh, uh, replanting trees in the center that were killed by the uh, gas. So we're still, we actually had, had a gas leaks task force meeting today. The gas companies told us they have fixed all of the leaks in the center, uh, you know, near Town Hall, near the Town Hall Garden that killed I think 14 trees. Um, however, we, we have bought a gas sniffer for the tree warden to use, and he still picks up gas. So before we replant anything, we still need to keep going back to National Grid and trying to figure out if we can confirm that there's no gas leaks before we plant everything back up. Questions? Okay, uh, fifty. Seven. Okay, infrastructure transportation fund. Here's one that's really exact. Thirty-four thousand two hundred seventy-nine dollars and thirty cents. So this is the um, <coughs> excuse me. This is the money that the town or every city in town now gets. Uh, from Uber and Lyft or TNC transportation network company rides as part of uh, a new fee that was put on put on those rides two years ago. So there's a 20 cent fee for every time anytime any of us take an Uber or a Lyft or ride share service. The state gets 10 cents from that ride and the city or town from where that ride started gets 10 cents for that ride. So last year we got about $25,000 this year uh, or for 2019 it, no, I think it's actually all the way back to 2018. <coughs> uh, we, we received $34,279.30. So that's the exact amount we received. 
Last year, we asked town meeting to appropriate the $25,000 amount to go towards our implementation of the bus rapid transit lane in East Arlington to help paint the roadway. This year, we're asking for that sum of money to be appropriated to go towards the center sidewalk project. There is, I'll, I'll, I'll mention, the, the governor is has filed legislation to increase that, I believe the 20 cent fee to $1 with the state keeping 70 cents and the town, city of towns getting 30 cents. I would doubt that that is what would be eventually passed, but this could be a revenue source that grows in years to come. Okay, now you want to use that towards the center sidewalk project in addition to the parking money? Yes, yeah, we, 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 we've, we, we're pulling funding from a lot of different areas. We've used Park and Benefit District money, Chapter 90 money. We would like to use this money, uh, the supplemental Chapter 90 money that was released as part of the supplemental budget back in the summer, so we're trying to pull from as many sources as are available. Yeah. What do you anticipate going out to bid? And the work being done? Probably go out to bid soon. The sidewalk work will likely start in the spring or the summer. The plaza work won't happen until late fall through the winter into the spring of 21 because we learned that under Broadway Plaza is a large MWRA valve that they were planning on replacing mm. now. So rather than us redoing the plaza and then having them dig it up, we're going to wait for them to do that work, put it out as one big contract, and the contractor that's doing that valve work for them will be the one that does the uh, Broadway Plaza. Questions? Yeah, so this sounds like a thing you ought to market, right? That you ought to make these little pots of money coming in from these various taxes clear to the public. They're yeah, not property yeah. taxes, they're paying for improvement projects. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't mean to mix metaphors here, but Joan should be, have a field day with that one. I, I'm sorry, any of this? Joan should have a field day with it. We should, we should advertise that we are using this kind of money to do this kind of work and it's not coming out of property taxes. Yeah, uh, I, you're right on. Yes. Okay, and you'll get us some wording. Yeah, I get it. For a motion. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll try. So, so um, Adam, is, is there a uh, now a comprehensive plan for for the plaza in front of the fire station? So we, for for the time being, which is probably a long time being, we have abandoned doing actually expanding Broadway Plaza as we had talked about, I think, four years ago now. Now there's a, a I guess I'd call it a comprehensive plan for redesigning the existing space at Broadway Plaza, but leaving that triangular space monument square that goes from the fire station up to the Civil War monument. Uh, leaving that alone as part of this project. The, I know the Veterans, um, the Veterans Committee, the Veterans Council, is still working to figure out what the right thing to do is with the honor roll. And I know there's, there had been talk about Cook's Hollow. I think we put the brakes on that a little bit. But talking about what the right thing to do for the Veterans Monument is a separate discussion from Broadway Plaza. So when you say redo it, you mean from let's see, where the, the end of that uh, memorial section is all, all the way up to this extreme? Yeah, so the, the side, we, we are planning on redoing the sidewalks around Monument Square. But when I'm saying redo Broadway Plaza, I'm, I'm saying actually within the existing curb lines of the existing Broadway Plaza. Where those stones and fountains are. Exactly. That's exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John? So at one point there is talk about closing off the access to Mass Ave in Broadway Plaza. So that's now. For the time, uh, for again, for probably a long time being, that's off the table. Okay, any other? Uh, trees on Broadway Plaza, are, uh, those are some nice trees there. Are they going to be able to be preserved? We're, good. we're preserving as many as we can. There's a number of them that will be removed as part of the MWRA work to get access to that valve. There's some that have to come down. Uh, there's others that would frankly likely die as part of the project based on where their roots are. So there's a number of trees uh, planned on being removed from Broadway Plaza. Uh, but also, I think actually a greater amount planned to be planted in their, in their place. How big they are is still a question. We might want to supplement with some tree funds uh, from the McKeckern <coughs> bequest 
uh, planting some larger trees than just putting a sapling so that we get better coverage, uh, you know, you know, faster. And would that include replacing all the trees that were taken out on, on the American alarm side? <coughs> well, we are, we are fully replanting over there. Yes. Yeah. We, we've coordinated with American Alarm. They have a planting plan for their property, and we've coordinated our planting plan along the sidewalk so that species and size and shape coordinate. Good. Any other questions on the uh, 57? Okay, 58. Uh, okay, this is the public access. So this will be the same as last year? Opaque, sorry. Uh, yes, this, I, I believe we did this for the first time last year. There's still, I, I guess, somewhat new uh, state regulation from the Department of Revenue that the PEG money, that's the cable money we get that ACMI provides their programming with, uh, used to flow into the town and per the agreement we have with ACMI, flow to ACMI, the state now wants town meetings or local, go local government legislatures to adopt those expenditures or appropriate those expenditures. So we'll, we'll put a very, again like last year, a very basic order of what we believe the revenue to be for the year and what ACMI's proposed <coughs> operating and capital expenditure. Okay, are there any questions? Okay. Okay, the next two are the water and sewer. I think those, um, are those amounts in the budget and grant you're getting those? Yeah, we can get those. Okay. Uh, 60, John. Okay, Potion, bike share infrastructure. So, likely everybody knows that Lime Bike has fully pulled out of the market. So the dockless bike share that we had for a year and a half or so uh, will no longer be here. Uh, we did see very high ridership or usership of mm -hmm. Lime Bike, so I think it demonstrated there was an appetite for bike share in the community. So we filed this warrant article uh, for $100,000 for us to be able to consider joining Blue Bike and expanding the Blue Bike network to Arlington. That's a far lower number than when we were talking about it just a couple of years ago. Uh, they have since been, Blue Bike's now been acquired by Lyft, so they have uh, significantly more resources behind them. Uh, I, I can't claim that I fully know what their business model is, but we went from talking about an initial investment of over $200,000 to $250,000 to uh, now an initial investment of $100,000 for five stations. Fortunately, since we filed this warrant article, we learned that we are receiving a state grant in the amount of $80,000, a workforce transportation grant uh, that we applied for in partnership with several other cities and towns uh, for blue bikes. So we have to match that 80 with 20,000 and that would be able to provide us five docking stations. However, um, I think over the course of the next month or so, we want to have a dialogue about if we think five stations is enough, because five stations probably only covers East Arlington, and Line Bike was covering the whole town. Um, and I, at least talking with some people, I think people are interested in seeing whether or not a town-wide bike share program could work. So we have, I don't want to say tonight we want to ask for the whole 100000 but tell you that we want to have some discussions over the next month or so and come back with a proposal for either 20000 to match the grant or 100000 to both match the grant and be able to acquire more stations to stretch for a larger segment of town. How many bikes per station? I believe it's 10 bikes per station. Now, how, how do the bike share programs work that I've seen in Somerville and Cambridge? Uh, do, 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 uh, do the companies own those stations? I'm trying to figure out why we're involved in this. So, no, from Boston to Cambridge to Somerville to Brookline, uh, the infrastructure, the, 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 the bikes and the stations have been purchased either directly by the municipalities or by institutional sponsors. Uh, but then they become the property of the municipality. The, the model has been 
that the operator, which was, so it was Hubway, operated by Motivate, then it changed to Blue Bike when they got a lot of money from Blue Cross, but Motivate was still the operator company, and now Lyft has purchased them, and I, I believe Motivate is still, even if they changed their name, I think it's the same company as operating them. So the model is that the municipality owns the infrastructure, but you work with an operator to, who are the ones that come out and service the stations, they rebalance the bikes, they pick up the Somerville bikes and bring it back to Somerville, and the Arlington bikes and bring it back to Arlington, and so on and so forth. That's, that's the way the model has worked. So will this be, in, uh, will the other cities and towns in the area be involved in this? We, so we would be able to instantly connect to the Blue Bike Network, or, uh, excuse me, Blue Bike Network in Somerville, Cambridge, Boston. Yes, it, it, becomes, it just expands the network outwards. Questions, Charlie? Who owns the bike? So my, my understanding is we will own the bike. And do we have a sense of what the life cycle is for these bikes and these stations? My understanding is they assume they will last five years. I think the stations will last longer than bikes are assumed to last five years. So so the citizens who use the bikes have to pay for their use. And we don't get a cut of that. The town doesn't get a cut of that. No, they, uh, under the old model, there was different ways to look at it. Either we would get a cut and have more of a capital payment, or we wouldn't get a cut and have less of a capital upfront payment. My understanding under this new model is the operator is going to operate it, and we're not, we're not part of that equation. That's my, that's my understanding. I, I, Admittedly, need to refine my understanding of it a little better now that we've got the grant to understand all the inner workings. So, but that's not that is my understanding. Tonight, that's my understanding. Alan? So the, is the 20000 is that an annual fee, or what, what, are, what are ongoing costs for maintenance, replacements, et cetera, et cetera? So my, my current understanding is is nothing, but I, but I, I need to refine that. But if we own the bikes and we own the stations, I would think that we'd be responsible for maintenance, for maintenance. and replacement in five years or whatever it is. Yeah, I think I, I, I know we would own replacement. I, I'm not clear on what what we own on day to day. Yeah. But uh, I want to know what the future costs of the program would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you say the line bike was really popular, do we have a count on users? Yeah, we, we have all that. I didn't bring that, but I have. We okay. have all that. I'm just wondering if, if all the taxpayers are subsidizing a relatively small number of residents. You mean, uh, so how many unique users? Yeah, we have that. I can I can get that. Okay. And we didn't have to pay anything for a library. Free. <coughs> Other questions? Yes, sir. How do we determine locations? I mean, and are we, you know, I mean, we would want, to, would want to put this in front of a business, right? You know, it's sort of like a track record. So how do we... So, but before we would uh, place them anywhere, we would go through a community process to figure out where I mean, I think we have some ideas what would work, but yeah, we would just put it in front of someone's business right. without talking to anyone. George? If this were to go forward, what's the time frame? Um, I think we would, if it was to go forward, we would hope to get something up and running by the summer. Including construction of all the, yeah. so the, pro the hearing process and the community process. Yeah, start the soon. Yeah. Do they have electric bikes? Right now, no. I'd be shocked if they don't want to move there eventually, but right now they don't. Okay, Annie? So did I miss this, or do we have a contract we'll be entering into? Yes, we haven't entered into it yet. Okay. We would have to. So there's there's like, the length of that contract is, how many years do you know? I think they do five year contracts. Okay, so $100,000, five years, we own the equipment, we own replacement and maintenance. I believe, I, I mean, ultimately I do think that would that is going to be what I learned when I okay. further dig into it. But they do all the moving the bikes back into place, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Making sure there's a bike, a bike in every rack. Yes. Grant? Um, who's going to do the repair? So my, my understanding is that's part of the operator's responsibility. So the company that does the operations, the rebalancing, moving the bikes around, does the day-to-day -day maintenance. Yeah, a brake, if, if something like a pedal brake or yes. a brake brake. And they, yeah, they, would, they would fix it. They would fix it. Yeah. Okay. John? 
I mean, I, I would imagine Lime Bike would love to come back with electric scooters. Um, and I'm just wondering what's the likelihood of that happening in Arlington and if it does, would happen, what would they, what would be the continued interest in the bike sharing that once we've made investments as opposed to everybody being interested in migrating to electric scooters? So our current <coughs> position is until the state law changes that legalizes the scooters, we're not going to move on them. Mm -hmm. uh, Brookline chose to not wait. Uh, MassDOT's basic, uh, so no one disputes that the state law does not, it does not, the state law says those sc scooters are not legal right now. MassDOT came out so sort of passing the buck a little bit saying, well, we'll leave it up to you. Like the law says this, but we're, you know, we're not going to come crack down on you if you, if you break it. But Brookline's still the only one that has chosen uh, to go against the law. Um, I think if they change the law, we would take a serious look at it. I'm sure, like Brookline, it would be a really uh, fiery local discussion about the pros and cons of the scooters. I, to your final point, I don't know if the scooters have cannibalized Brookline's blue bike bike share. Um, well, I can ask. I'm sure, I'm sure they have data, but I, I don't know if it's done that. Do our bylaws? Forbid, I, I'm pretty sure they forbid bicycles on sidewalks. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do they say anything about scooters? I think they say things about scooters too. They know. Uh, do Jack, our bylaws? I'm pretty sure we, we dealt with all kinds of electronic, electric vehicles in town at one point or another. I mean, if, if it doesn't specifically reference electric scooters, it has to reference motorized vehicles, yeah. which they, right. they are. Okay, other questions on this? John. Uh, let me pose a hypothetical, if I may. Uh, suppose yeah. uh, somebody tears down one of our ski hills on a bicycle and goes over the tail bar and gets injured. Uh, we own the bike, and they claim that the brakes were froze on or whatever. Uh, are we liable? Let me. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to give an off the cuff answer. Let, let, let me verify. I can't imagine that there's significant municipal liability given the other communities that have been doing it for so long now, and I'm sure there have been <coughs> incidents, um, but let me, let me find out. Okay, other questions? Any? One last quick, quick question just because nobody's asked it. Why are they not paying us? I, uh, I've asked that question myself for a long time. <laughs> I, you know, I think the answer is, and I think this is where this becomes a policy discussion for cities and towns, like government subsidizes basically every form of transportation, mm -hmm. this form of transportation needs government subsidy. I, th I think that's the short answer, right? We subsidize transit, people don't like to hear it, but we subsidize cars. Um, I think this is another version of, you know, transportation needing subsidy. Good question. All right. I'm not making a value judgment on that. Just no, no. I understand what you're saying. I just wanted to double check that we'd actually thought about it. Alan. Well, I just want to, you know, before this this vote comes to town meeting, there there are other places, a lot in Europe, and I think Malden. They just buy a bunch of old bikes and they paint them orange and they you know leave them around town, sort of you know, a free library yeah. sort of situation. <laughs> but my but my question is, you know, really is are, are any alternatives looking uh, being looked at to providing convenient casual bikes for, you know, other than blue? Other options other than blue that are being investigated? So the only other, uh, I guess I'll, I'll say two things. Um, we, we have for years and years and years looked at all the options out there, mm -hmm. and we, we, you know, we settled on Lime. It, well, I, I shouldn't even say we settled on Lime. We settled on Dockless because it was free. Yeah. And the major downside of Dockless or the lay orange bikes around everywhere approach is you don't get the benefit of the network because we're not an island, right? People aren't going to use these bikes just within the walls of Arlington. So Lime, Lime was, was good, but it was also a little wonky because most people took their Lime bikes down to Aylward, but they couldn't use it when they crossed those two big granite barriers in the bike path because you cross into Cambridge right over there. 
So at certain points, you would just see these farms of line bikes <laughs> left right on the Arlington side down there. By joining the network, people can take their bike from Arlington Center, they can get on a blue bike, and they can go put it in the rack at Alewife. They can go put it in the rack at Teal Square. They can go put it in the rack at Davis Square, and so on and so forth. On a Saturday afternoon, they could take it in Boston, and they could come down to Capitol Square in East Arlington and go see a movie and have an ice cream. The network is the, is the benefit of joining blue bikes. So we could look at other options. The Zagster is a sort of a lower tech, lower cost option that some communities have used. I think Lexington is using Zagster right now. Uh, Salem has used Zagster. Um, but I think, I, I, I guess I do believe that if, if we want to go forward with this, getting the benefit of the network is how you really give your residents the real true benefit of this, of this transportation uh, you know, asset. Have we looked at uh, the past use of the line bikes and, and what the anticipated cost to the residents are going to be to use these bikes. <clears throat> In other words, for that $100,000, how much revenue are we generating for a blue bike company? I can get that. I don't, I don't know what else to So basically, if, if everybody who was using a line bike went to use a blue bike, how much would you get? Let me sort of ask a broader question. Uh, town government provides an array of services that not all, don't always go to everybody. Uh, library provides people services for people going to a library. Uh, and I think there's a general recognition that to a certain degree we're, we're living beyond our means, um, providing we have to have overrides every yeah. three years, five years, whatever. Um, what do you see as the justification for basically taking on a whole new transportation service to the tune of $100,000 a year? $20,000 a year, okay, that may be different, but I have a feeling that $80,000 state grant's not going to last forever. Uh, but it's, it's $100,000 that we're sort of adding to the taxpayer's stress that benefits, I don't know how many people a day, uh, do we have statistics for line bikes on how many people would actually use those each oh, yeah, day? No, I mean, we have literally the statistics for every trip. Yeah. Where it started, where it finished, how long it was, how fast they went. I mean, we have, like, the, the tech on the line bikes is really sophisticated, so we have really good data. How many ended up in Millbrook? How, how many, many ended up in Millbrook? How many went to Spike yeah. Pond? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but anyway, what would be the justification for an added, bur added burden on the taxpayer? Uh, for what I'll guess is a fairly small number of people. So I don't think it's as small as you would think. Okay. I think it's in the thousands and, you know, not the hundreds. <coughs> I, I think it's a lot of people use these bikes or would use these bikes. Um, you know, I, I, and I struggle with that, but I struggle with the broader question. We, we have our financial limitations that we're all very well aware of. Um, but we are a growing community in a very, in a rapidly changing region. And many people are moving here or are currently live here who are looking for new and better ways to enhance their quality of life, get to work, change their commute, whatever it might be. And more and more people are looking for these flexible, these flexible ways to get down to Alewife or get to their office or whatever it might be. And I, I mean, I think we could make the decision that we don't want to spend this money or that we shouldn't spend this money, and that would be a fine decision. But we would then have to figure out the way to respond to the residents who are looking for those better ways to get around, who don't want to sit in congestion, who you know, don't want to take the bike out of the small basement in their condo in East Arlington. They'd rather walk down and get a blue bike. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I could, you, you could talk about a thousand anecdotes right now why this could provide an easier service. But I, I think that is the policy question for for me to consider, for this body to consider, for town meeting to consider. And yeah, there is only so far we can go, right? I mean, we're not, you know, the next thing would be someday maybe to talk about running our own transit service or, you know, there's so many, there's so far we could go and at some point we have to say there's only so far the Arlington tax dollar. 
Okay, I, have, I know there's a couple other questions, but let me, um, could you put together all this data? Yeah. Um, don't bury us with rides, but I'd love to know, you know, how many people use this, uh, say, line bike, uh, you know, per day, yeah. so we get yeah. the service. When you get all your data together, when you have the contract, when you know about the liability question, when you know yeah. about that, could you make an appointment with Liz like to come back. Yes. and come Absolutely. on back Absolutely. Yeah. with uh, whoever else you think? Now, uh, the schedule right now, uh, the 11th, the 16th, and the 18th of March are free. Now, two of those are Wednesdays. Um, so if you can think of the 11th as the 18th as a tentative date. Okay, now, uh, any other comments or questions? Charlie? Uh, yes. Adam, you, you know, you just, you actually sort of collided over it, but the core question is, in my mind, <coughs> what's the difference between a blue bike and your own bike? I mean, if you want to ride a bike, it might cost $100 or $200 or something like that, and it lasts for 10 years or 20 years, right? Why are we buying these bikes at these stations? I mean, there are hundreds of people in town who ride bikes all the time. I ride bikes. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I can't make that leap. Mm -hmm. with, the, you know, it was, with the line bikes, it was free. <coughs> there was no decision. So it's yeah. much more. Much easier to right? yeah. yeah. But now, now you're saying, you, you said, that, you know, somebody who doesn't want to take the bike out of their cellar, they'd rather walk three blocks to look at those bikes there. Well, I mean, Tough. Yeah, how do I get it? I, if you I, need I, the I exercise, it. lifting it out of the cellar and walking down the street, it's probably good for you. <coughs> I get, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll, I'll say again, I, I think it's, a, I think it's, a, it's an entirely legitimate policy discussion. I mean, I think some people will feel strongly that with the changing workforce and the changing schedules that people have, that, you know, if they're in a hurry in the morning and they decide that they want to get on, get a hurry day. But if they're, they're in a hurry in the morning and they need to get on the bus, get right down to the red line and get into work, um, you know, that's their morning commute. But when they come out of Bale Wife in the afternoon, they would love to get on a bike that they didn't ride there in the morning and ride home on the bike. So, I mean, I think that's just one example. I think people will talk about how it provides more flexibility. But I, but I think, I mean, I think there's a point and a counterpoint to, is, some people will argue that it should be the town's or could be the town's responsibility. That was what I'd you were to buy a bike. Right? And I, 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 I frankly show up because I see, I see the merits of both. Just, uh, you know, because we're going to get the, in the arguments of yes or no on this when uh, the manager comes back. Any additional questions that you'd like him to consider or that you would have at that time? Anybody? Okay. Uh, Local 72. Yeah. Local option taxes. Uh, now this is one that we put in every year on the hope that there'll be something in the budget. Uh, that uh, Do you see anything in the governor's budget or any talk that you have heard about that would provide <coughs> or re regulatory that could provide Arlington a new source of revenue that we might want to take advantage of quickly? Not right now, no. There's lots of talks about different types of taxes and fees, particularly around transportation at the state level. Um, I don't see any passing very soon or before we're at town meeting. Um, and I don't know that any of them actually are even local option. Okay. There is talk, not, I, not to go into too much detail, but there's been for a couple of years talk about something called regional ballot initiatives that would allow cities and towns either by themselves or banded together to adopt, um, I guess you'd call them debt exclusions or things that look like debt exclusions to fund large transportation projects. So that's not exactly a local option tax. That's something that could come up in the transportation debate uh, this year, but uh, it doesn't exactly fit this point. And, okay. and, and probably not like it has. Okay. Uh, anything exciting going on in the town? Well, it's always exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Any yes, other question, questions for the board one manager? Question, John. Uh, speaking of uh, revenue enhancement, um, last year we voted on the, on the recreational marijuana taxes and fees, what, what, what not. Um, and <coughs> sense of when we might start seeing some revenue from that? Um, so we have received our first, uh, not very large, but our first payments from uh, medicinal or the medical marijuana dispensary cool. uh, operating at Water Street. Uh, I think we'll probably not start to see the recreational marijuana until next fiscal year. They are, they're, still, they're, they're still not open. Um, I think they've been issued their special permit for the ARB, so it's probably still months before we see that. And the, the second firm is further behind them, and then there's a third license or host community agreement that hasn't been issued yet, so that would obviously be much further behind them. Thank you. Cool. Okay, any other questions for the manager? Oh, we have them trapped. Um, so there were a couple of articles that I thought we were going to discuss in the business. Articles 9, 10, and 20, they're all fee adjustments or new fees? Well, we did, we did 9, which is now 11. No, um, the canine control fees and fines. In my word, it's still Article 9. I listed all the ones, but I I'm sorry, which articles? Canine control fees and fines, Article 9. Oh. I believe one right. so on nine, does have for the mm -hmm. clerk. Be eight. <coughs> so on, actually, out. So yep. on, um, yeah, former eight, current nine, and then a couple others, like the former nine, we had, we had referred it to the um, finance department subcommittee to actually get a revenue impact on the dollar change. Okay, so yeah. we, I'm waiting for that. So we right. referred it, and then we were going to ask the question until we had an answer. Yeah. All right. And I'll, I'll verify this, but I'm pretty sure both of them are to be in, become in compliance with state law. Okay. So I, I, when I don't think we're just taking random action to reduce. No, I didn't think you were. I just thought we might. But I guess we'll wait for the end. Yeah, that's great. Okay, anything else? Um, okay. Going back to out of the nine, I did check with the, uh, the assistant town clerk, and I asked them, about this particular article, why did the request to, to reduce the fine? And basically, what they said that um, they found that more than more so than not, people have more than one dog across the town. And instead of a fifty dollar fine, there's up to be a hundred dollar fine. And they're finding out that people, because of this, they're not registering their dogs at all. So they felt that um, simply stated to reduce the fine from fifty dollars to twenty five dollars. That's the way they explain it. That's right. I agree. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Really appreciate appreciate your time. Okay. Now. So you voted. Okay, now let's go back through these articles. Now, Article 8, uh, the new one. Okay, now the first five articles we looked at were 8, uh, eight 9, 12, uh, 8, 12, 13 and 27 were basically uh, we had some questions do we want to hear them uh, they're they're basically selectman articles uh, so the bike hours I recommend that we just let the selectman handle that yeah. sound okay yep okay uh, adjust fees that was on the uh, strong water, strong water. Again, I would suggest we just let the selectman handle that. Okay. Uh, impact on municipal buildings is the Brookline one on fossil fuels. Uh, again, my suggestion would be to let the selectman handle it, but yeah, yes. Okay. And the 
27 was the bike path? Police details. Police details, okay. Uh, and I guess my selectman, my suggestion is to let the selectman handle that one too. Yep. Yes, I don't see any additional cost. Okay, now, I think we can do some votes here on some of the more routine ones. Let's start with Article 49. This is all on the new updated motion. Okay, Article 49, uh, like the manager said, all the union contracts are three-year contracts set to expire in June of 2021, uh, so we don't worry about those. The only one left is the patrolman. Uh, they have not settled. Uh, they're going into binding arbitration, uh, which is their right. Uh, however, we, need, you know, we still need to appropriate money because at some point there will be a three-year contract and that'll have to go and backfill go, last year, this year, and next year. Uh, and so uh, the manager's office determined that we need 251000 to be set aside for future collective bargaining, uh, the same way we did last year, mm -hmm. um, except last year with a couple more unions. But uh, So the appropriation would be needed would be 251000 Do I have a motion? I move. move. Okay. Second. Move. Charlie uh, seconds. 251,000. Is there any questions on this, especially the, for the new people? Uh, okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <sighs> Unanimous? 19. Okay. So that one done. Now, parking. Uh, so Liz, as soon as you get that, send it around and we'll take care of that. Uh, <coughs> this is a semi-revolving enterprise fund that we set up for the parking, central parking district to take all those quarters. <coughs> you notice during snowstorms, they don't park as well in the non-metered space as they do in the metered space to give you an incentive to go down and put your quarters in. Uh, okay, so we'll wait to hear that. Okay, Article 57. Okay, Article 57 is for $34,279.30, which is the amount of money that we actually received uh, last year, I guess. Uh, and the manager wants to set that aside. Uh, to contribute to the redoing of the brick sidewalks in Arlington Center. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion, questions? Okay, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 219. Okay, public access. We'll need a number. Yeah, we'll need a number. So, uh, as the manager explained, this is the second year we've done it, so basically the same. <coughs> Instead of the money just flowing <coughs> to the cable company, we actually need to appropriate it. <coughs> so, we'll wait to hear that. <coughs> Grant, do you have any, uh, the 58 or 59? Yep. Yes, okay, 58 is, or sorry, 59. So that's a sewer. Sewer. Uh, that's asked for 800,000. 800,000 to be borrowed? Okay, for new people, uh, each year uh, we set aside an article. And what happens is the NWRA will loan this, loan this money to you interest free. And then it gets, uh, then the uh, treasurer works it out with the, uh, for a payment schedule, and we pay it back over a period of time from the uh, water and sewer enterprise funds. So it's, it's sort of free money for now, except you know, uh, we have to pay it back. 
Uh, so 800,000, any questions? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 219. And how much for water? 1.3 million. Do I have a motion? I so moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 219. Okay. Uh, bike infrastructure, we'll wait to hear. It should be an interesting discussion. It'll be interesting to see the statistics. Okay, and Alan. 70, yes, yeah, Alan. Just a quick comment on this, just saying this is a really moving situation. Lyft just bought Motivate that runs Blue Bikes. Uber just bought Jump. They just moved into Providence, Rhode Island. I'm sure, I'm sure Blue Bikes wants to lock us up with Blue before Lyft gets, before Jump gets here. I mean, it's such a fluid situation. So I think it's not just either or, it's weight may be the best option. So I'm just I think everybody should look into the whole industry of bike yeah. sharing because it, it's lines going to go out of business, such as it is. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Now, uh, I mean, does anybody know how Lime did? They make money? They lost three hundred million dollars last year. That was not very good. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I always thought they were a litter. I just see Lime bikes all over the place. Yeah. In the middle the of the sidewalk. It's an industry in turmoil, and signing a five-year contract with anybody is probably. Maybe a bad idea. Now, who, okay, so I walked down Mass Avenue to Cambridge, and then I walked to the left down the bike path to Davis Square. Yeah. There's a rack of bikes there. Does anybody know whose those are? That's blue. It used to be Hubway, and then they got sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield, changed the name to Blue. It's operated by a company named Motivate, which was purchased by Lyft not long ago. So it, <laughs> there's a lot of churn in the money Okay, and like I said, if we if we put twenty thousand down, that's probably going to be for the first year, and then we lose the state grant. It's a hundred thousand after. So yeah, I think Alan's right. Think about this, you mm -hmm. know, where this is going. Does anybody else have any general comments? I have a bike. I have a bike. I own a bike. You can buy a whole bike for dollars. You know, we, we uh, Barbara and I moved <coughs> up to uh, Watermill, right on the bike path, and we brought our two bikes there, and I think. Barbara's used them once, and I've used them twice in two and a half years. I, I don't know. That's dangerous uh, out there on the bike. You should use the bike. You And then there's always the issue about, uh, I'm going to talk to the manager about why rush this. Yeah. There's one other thing that's common in these, so I don't know if our data is like that, which is, Anybody who lives in Arlington can buy a bike and, and ride down to Alewife. The bikes originally in the business plans talked about somebody comes on the red line to Alewife and wants to get somewhere to Arlington. That was actually their primary use case. So it'd be interesting to see how many of the bikes are being used by residents versus non-residents. And if it in fact is a lot of non-residents, what value do we place on making it easier for somebody got to ale life on the red line to get further into Arlington. But we can we can have that discussion with us more. Well those are the issues. Yeah. Alan? So, so I'll just mention some people from Tufts I think took all of the GPS readings from line bikes and they did a big map of where the bikes came from and went to. And I'll, I'll I'll find the I'll find the paper and send it to Liz, but there's a lot of science in how those bikes moved around. Well, I'd be interested in yeah. seeing that. I'd love to see that. 300 million, now is that like the whole country? Global. Yeah, what? Lost? Okay, so, uh, but, but think of the questions, and if you have the questions like Alan, I'd suggest just put it together in an email and shoot it to the manager. You know, so he might as well know what the questions are before he comes back. And I suggest that to, uh, you know, to anybody here. Question. Did he, propose, did he talk about a five-year contract? Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that right? 
And then we apparently own the racks, the bikes. If you want a cheap bike, by the way, the police department have an auction, uh, I think in the spring. Every spring. Yeah. Now, of a lot of, I would assume, fairly cheap bikes. So. Yeah, we have a, in our neighborhood, we have a bike exchange once a year. Yeah. You know, the kids who are now 15, they give the bike away that they had when they were 12, and they get the next big one from the neighbor, et cetera. Good. Okay, and the last, so that's going to be later. And the last one is the local option taxes, which is 72. Okay, um, I would suggest, how did we handle this last year? <clears throat> By the way, we have 83 articles in the warrant. And apparently, if you can combine the special with the annual, last year we had 83 articles. So it's not as bad, provided we don't have another special. What the law we said no action. Yeah, I'm just trying to see how we took the vote last year. So we are reasonably consistent. Ah, all right. Yeah, last year we just said no action to be taken. Comment, there's no legislation or regulation available for adoption under this article. I, I guess I'd recommend the same vote. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, no action on Article 72. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favor? Uh, no action. Unanimous. 219. Okay, so that gets rid of some articles. Uh, I think we had one or two budgets left to do. Okay, let's do planning. Page 66. Sixty-six. We'll recommend the uh, the uh, budget as printed. There are a few peculiarities here. Um, under expenses, there's, there is something called telephone, which is mislabeled. That's supposed to be dues and subscriptions. And the, the history is correct on that for dues and subscriptions. So that's just a technological thing. budget before. So I think these figures have been um, dredged up from the uh, expenses that were spent. And so it's it's the amount the this is this rates uh, opinion that this is just better budgeting to put put a put it in. They use it to go to, to meetings and to and the uh, Conservation Commission people use it to to go to their sites around town. So 
what is it? What? What is it? Like, what car is that? It's your own car. Okay, so these are people asking to be reimbursed for mileage on their own cars. Yeah, re reimbursement. Right. So did this come out of technology and economic development? What wine was it pulled from? Uh, or I, I don't know where, where it came from. But, but they, they've been paying it themselves from their own free pack, that's my understanding. Well, it had to be someplace. And they're not budgeting for it this year. This year. So maybe better accounting, but I'm not sure it's better budgeting. Well, they're taking bikes. That would be nice. <laughs> Blue or green? <laughs> Blue this year. So, <laughs> not lying. So are, the, are they taking the auto allowance and putting it under technology and economic development? Looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. For nine dollars. It's probably a transition. Yeah. Something's going to get fixed uh, here. Maybe I should uh, double check on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, it's, they need to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, if this was coming, if this was not technology, but miscellaneous or something, you know, then you'd be bringing money down. Dean? So flipping through the book quickly, what I've noticed is general ledger account code 5209 mm. for everybody else is in-state travel. And so what, I, what I'm guessing that they're doing here is they're saying reimbursement for mileage moving around the town of Arlington is not in-state travel. And so right. they're taking it out of the in-state travel general ledger account and moving it down to um, 5354 technology slash economic development. Yes. So well, that use of 5209 auto launch is just, the only time it's, let, the, let, the general ledger account is in-state travel. They change it here to Ottawa Lines. So where it's where like, is it now? What, where has it been the in the budget team? No, what I'm saying is, is it, was it one line item somewhere else in the? So every so if you think about it, like this entire book rolls up to general ledger accounts, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So everybody, every uh -huh. so 5209 is supposed to be in state travel. So none of the activities in the planning department that Peter described are in state travel. All in town. In town. So I think, right, it's in town travel. So I think when you, what you're saying is you're just moving it out of that ledger account because it doesn't belong there. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it belong there? Well, because it doesn't qualify as in-state travel. It's because it's, that's that's what I mean. it's not in-state travel. <laughs> where, would the, where do you think the proper place would be? I don't know if there's a proper place, but I'm guessing I just want it out of there because it doesn't belong there. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise unclassified? Yeah. So that's, what, that's why they put it down to, I think, so I think what they did is they didn't eliminate the expenditure of the money. They just reclassed it down to 5354. Right. Technology. Or maybe, maybe they increase technology just to And 5354 doesn't have a lot of usage in the other departments. Actually, it doesn't have any so far. They're just making this stuff up. Well, well, like we, we saw the economic alpha person here this, this, this afternoon this evening. Mm -hmm. and, and she's a major user of this, according to what we were told. Well, I don't think it should be in that class. I think it should be in otherwise, you know, otherwise yeah. unclassified. Yeah. Because it doesn't sound like it fits in matches either of those definitions. Yeah, if it's, if it's truly uh, a swap, but maybe it's something else and they just eliminated the, the auto allowance all. And, and the, the increase in technology is for some other reason. Well, uh, Peter, could you go back to Sandy and say that the Finance Committee doesn't think that putting in town travel <coughs> under technology and economic development makes any sense that it should be quite otherwise if anything put in the otherwise unclassified yes I will. well right. would you and verify that that's what it is first or? right and then that you know it should be budgeted in whatever line it's in it so if they're going to call it auto allowance then put the budget there 
She was saying he says. Okay. The number Line item. Just that some apartments use. I don't know if that's appropriate for in-town travel or not. Yeah. We might ask what other what the other departments have auto yeah. allowance. We could ask in general which which uh, budget item they're using. Now, where would inspection? Most of that would be. I would assume inspection would be the same thing. They travel around the town a bit. Of course, I think they use town cars. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I bet that's the difference. I'm going to start putting tabs on these things. I'll go Sandy, it's very nice. Yeah, they, they have travel, yeah. and they've got other white unclassified with nothing in it. So, but again, I think they use town cars, so it's, that's different. Uh, <coughs> okay, anything else? There's one other point. Um, on the uh, offsets, the con conservation number is... Uh, 4,971. And their <laughs> um, Conservation Commission collects fees and they go into a fund and can only be used for uh, certain things. And this is one of them. And it, it's supposed to pay part of the uh, salary of the environmental planner. Um, That doesn't that amount, of course, doesn't pay any significant part of that salary. Okay. Um, the, fund, the fund has about $10,000 in it. So uh, I asked them to consider uh, extracting more than, more than $4,900 from it. Do you know how much they take in on an annual basis? Could you? It's a good chunk. It's a good chunk of the ten thousand. Yeah. Um, could you ask them what's their how, how much have they how much have they been receiving uh, on an annual basis? And if they can't give you give you the num the number, the controller should be able to. Anything else if note? That's all. Okay, any questions? Discussion? Okay, with the caveats that we'll hear back from Sandy or whoever on the appropriate place to put the uh, 4901 and what the Conservation Commission uh, annual revenue is. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Okay, wait a minute, first Dan. Wait, we don't have to have a caveat though, because we don't we don't need a caveat because we don't vote line items. Mm -hmm. No, I know that, but we want to. If we vote on this, we want to vote, but we also want to get those pieces of information back to us. It doesn't matter to our vote. Though. It doesn't matter to the vote. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just making sure. It's just make sure they are uh, consistently in the same account. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Annie. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous 219. Okay, now uh, on our calendar. We have one more. Uh, right, but it's 10 o'clock. Page the next page. Uh, no. Okay, uh, go back to the next page. What, 60. I'm sorry? Did we, did we vote, please? 
Yeah. Okay, redevelopment board, page 670. There's no change, the same, the same as last year, but $10,800. So moved. So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, the calendar is. Not fair. Guys, uh, we have a scheduled meeting on uh, Monday the 24th. Liz, do we have any hearings for that day? 24th of uh, February, no. No. Uh, who's going to have budgets ready for next Monday? We can do police. I'm sorry? We can do police. Just, okay, police. We'll do um, bracket rates. Okay. Uh, any others? Okay, police will take about 15 minutes. Rec and Rink will probably take another 15 minutes. No hearings. Uh, okay, I hereby cancel next Monday's meeting. Liz, can you let everybody who was not here know? So next Monday, the 24th meeting is canceled. Uh, Wednesday, the 26th, we are hearing the... Uh, Community preservation. Now that, that'll take a good chunk of the day. Liz, are they going to be sending materials to us? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, so after we do community preservation, we'll go into the record and the, and the police. How about by Wednesday? Are there additional budgets will be ready? Fire. You fire? Okay, great. Okay, now uh, Wednesday, March 4th, we have. Uh, Capital budget. I, I inadvertently left off the second, um, and I'll add it in the calendar, but we're going to put arts and, Arlington Arts and Culture on the second of March. Okay, the second. Okay, so on uh, Monday, March 2nd, the Arts and Culture are coming in? Yes. Okay. Now they wanted the same amount of money that they did last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Say again. What are they requesting the same amount as last year? I believe they're requesting the same amount as last year, but I will put it down and I will get documentation to put it. Okay. The same amount as they so requested last year, or the same amount as they got last. Year? I think the same amount as they got last. Year. Okay. Now, uh, and if they could talk about ways that they're raising money to reduce the burden on the town, that would be I have clarified for them that they need to do that. However, the email that I got from them was very long and elaborate and corporate, and I'm worried that they're coming in with 20 slides. So I'm working on making sure it's concise. Okay. So the tr uh, Monday the 2nd, we are hearing from the arts and culture. Okay, so Monday's meeting <laughs> canceled. We have some budgets to fill up. It's Wednesday, <coughs> Monday the second. What other budgets can come in? The IT budget will probably. Okay, others. Uh, Bill. I was to say the, the fourth, March fourth. Uh, the assessor. Can be seeing yeah, well, they, they, oh, maybe the second. Month. We're seeing the assessor on the third, so we can get a report on the fourth. Okay. Public works? Are we? Don't know yet. Okay. Uh, and did I say Wednesday, Liz? Did I say one uh, look at Wednesday the 11th maybe for the manager? Yes, the 11th or the 18th. Okay. Do you want me to call him or will he? Why, why don't you give him a call and, uh, and ask about that? Okay, is there any other business for the meeting? Meeting adjourned.